What's going on everybody? So today I want to talk about the most important game mode in the entire game, in my opinion. Um, now, Disa Caves is incredibly important, don't get me wrong. However, this game mode is going to give you access to a lot more summon income, and arguably, although your gear is incredibly important and is definitely the late game grind, when you're early to mid game, even going on to late game, getting your new characters, getting these gene hybrids, uh, getting these evolutions is going to be a main source of your progression into the mid and early game, or early to mid game, and then even into the early late game, and then you start farming your gear. So prioritizing this is actually something that you may want to consider going forward in combination with your Disa Caves, or at least thinking about this and putting together the right strategy for this game mode. That's Ancient Altar. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, I'm actually gonna jump into Ancient Altar. It just got over with the reset. So I'm gonna go showcase what I was able to acquire last week. Um, now, keep in mind that I had a pretty okay Emma and I don't really have an insane type of squad going because I didn't get super lucky on my elite pulls at the time. But you can see here on Novice, I'm getting level four one-shotting. That's two advancement uh, recruitment cards, some gear XP, as well as some select faction recruitment cards to get you some fodder and some gear here that's probably just going to be trash for the most part um i don't use really yellow gear anymore if i can help it easy this is the easy reward so you can see here i actually got three limited recruitments three advanced tickets and some um exclusive weapon elite runes and some mythic gear and then we're going to move over to uh or actually that's going to be i think all of it that i actually ended up acquiring because i ended up doing easy completed and then i also did a little bit of normal and then on top of that you actually have some achievements to be able to acquire i'm going to collect them all here so you just see the amount of limited recruitments that you can actually acquire if we just go down the board here novice can see you can only get advanced uh, cards easy uh you can actually start to get some advanced cards um normal you can actually start to get limited cards here hard Limited cards, hell, even more limited cards, as well as all the other stuff in the previous difficulty. So incredibly, incredibly important that you do this. Not only that, but you actually get rewards at the end of each session, if I remember correctly. Um, but talking about strategy here in terms of this boss, the first off, we have five tickets every single week. Five tickets every single week. It's a weekly reset, which means because it's a weekly reset, you do not want to do any of these battles until the end of the week, usually on the last day. Keep in mind that this takes about an hour and a half of like letting the battle play through usually for me, because uh, sometimes the game crashes. If you get lucky and it's a smooth process, maybe about 30, 45 minutes. So you want to leave some time in there to be able to complete this and do your five battles. But you really, really do want to do this the last day because you're going to be as strong as you possibly can get when you reach that last day. On top of that here, if we just go to the ancient altar and click this little info button, you can actually see a lot of uh, the kind of tool tips here. So you can see you're gonna need three teams to fight. First and second battles, you're gonna face the minions. The minions, when you kill them or actually get through their health bars, they have a total of, I believe they start at seven technical health bars, but they immediately drop down to, to six here when you hit them. And I can actually jump into a battle here and just kind of showcase this for you guys in just a second here. Um, but you're going to want to get them as far down as you possibly can because each minion gives the main boss a specific skill. And if you kill the bosses, if you kill all of the bosses um, or the mini bosses, the main boss actually loses that specific skill. For example, there's like a big heavy hitter. There's a shield that the boss gives itself and you kill the minions, that skill will completely get removed. Or if you do a lot of damage to that minion, it'll just get weaker and weaker. Also, um, bosses, uh, the minions will recover every single round. Uh, so if you go ahead and use your first ticket and you do, I don't know, 1 million damage to the main boss, that main boss is going to keep its HP for the next time you hit it. But the side bosses will reset to full HP. So you still have to battle them up from full HP. Um, each battle is going to provide rewards based on the damage. And then the totality of rewards every week is going to be calculated up. And then you're going to get rewards at the end of it. If you kill the final boss of normal difficulty of above, you're going to receive two settlement rewards corresponding to the difficulty which is massive and then um uh, milestone rewards will automatically be claimed when you re-enter the mode page after reset so you can see there when i clicked on the mode i got the rewards that's what's going to happen so now that we've gone over kind of the mechanics i want to jump into a battle here and showcase the strategy of each of the minions and of course uh just going through 
and showing what a battle looks like. I'm going to do novice and then just complete the whole battle so you actually see what the battle looks like. And uh, I can one clear one key this so it's not actually, I don't have to wait any uh, is basically what I'm saying. So you can see here, if we click the strategy menu and I move myself over a little bit here, we can actually see what each of these minions are doing. So first off, we have the Destroyer Quinta. This is going to be the main boss. They're immune to CC. They have a big fat AoE and they have a shield um, that is going to absorb 6% of max HP for eight seconds. These two skills right here, are based off of these other two um, skills that the opponent has or uh, that the minions have. The big hit here and the shield are the ones that can be removed if you kill the side minions. So that's something to keep in mind when you're going through and killing off these bosses. You're going to want to avoid having the main boss actually smack you with a massive, massive hit with the Infernal Blast and the shield. So you want to get that at least down as much as you possibly can. Um, on top of that, they have a massive attack increase. Every 30 seconds, the boss receives a stack of Abyssal Power. It's going to increase the attack gain of the boss. Then we also have a Hellgate. This is going to unlock at Stage 2. Stage 2 and Stage 3 um, are going to be unlocked as you progress through the battle. 30 seconds and 90 seconds, respectively. Hellgate's going to increase attack and damage taken um, by 30% for 10 seconds. Abyssal Core is going to summon a Blood Beetle that periodically inflicts 30% damage to all enemies. Killing Blood Beetles restores full energy to all heroes. And then lastly, Hell Slam and Seal of Death. Seal of Death is just a massive single target hit. And Hell Slam is just an AoE hit with a chance to inflict attack drop. So the main strategy for the boss here is to be as survivable as you possibly can. If you can, um, get a tank to tank these big fat single target hits. And then make sure you have enough healing to not just periodically die from the AoEs and have some AoE yourself or be able to target these blood beetles so you can get full energy restore for your entire heroes. That's going to be important to manage. Then we have the mini bosses here. This is where it gets a little bit interesting because for the main boss, you're going to want single target, some healers, and a tank. And then for the side boss, first the Demon Supplicant, this is going to have that shield. This is where you're going to get that shield. So you really want to focus this guy because the shield, it says 6% of max HP, but that is a ton of HP, guys, especially if you're fighting normal, for example, which I'm actually stuck on. I can't full clear it yet, um, but 6% of the HP, if you just look here, 10% is going to be 2 million. So 6% is going to be about that 1.2 million portion, uh, portion of the HP, which is a massive amount of HP. Um, so you really want to get this boss down. And the way you do that is by bringing in summon characters. This is when I was talking about, um, uh, I, I don't know if I released this video already or if I'm going to release it, but basically you're going to want to prioritize summon characters because they're very, very powerful. This incinerate was going to kill your units off if they do not prioritize the summons. And then on top of that, you're going to want a lot of single target damage as well to bring down this character because they have a lot of tankiness with the shield. And then the other boss is just an AOE hit. So you're going to want to have at least a healer in here. You're going to want a healer in all three of these game modes, to be honest, for the most part. Um, and then we also have a summon for Hellhounds. So you're going to want some AOE to kill off the Hellhounds in this game mode. All right, so now that we went over all the skills and I've given you kind of the strategies, even in the tool tips here, it's going to tell you kind of what you want. You can see multi-target hero... Uh, damage hero, recruit heroes, and then you can see single turret damage hero. What this means is you're going to want AoE, summon characters, and then you're going to want single turret damage. So with this, um, I completely outclass the normal modes, um, so it's not really a big deal for me, but I'll just run in here. You can just see what's going to happen. First one up is going to be that demon supplicant um, that's going to basically hit your summon characters and i happen to have or, or this is the aoe guy sorry um, where we're about to kill the blood beetles that kind of spawn or the hounds i forgot what they're called there's the hounds you can see here and i have ravenna and i also have omar to kind of take care of the hounds they're not killing off my tank you can see the health bar at the top here it's going down very, very quickly because I really outclass novice mode. But you can see the point here. You're going to want to get as many health bars down as possible. And you're going to want to kill the hellhounds for this specific boss. If you possibly can, bring in some AoE for it. Even this guy hits pretty hard. You can see my characters. They are taking some damage here. So it's not a walk in the park. And you can see there, the boss lost that skill. Infernal Blast, completely gone because I killed the boss. That's why you want to make sure you have good teams on the side. The second one here, we're going to have a summon character. You can see here, I happen to have Kalaza here. When he hits his ultimate, he's going to go ahead and summon a dupe of himself um, right there. And you'll see here when they, this character launches its big hit, this incinerate, it's going to go immediately into this summon character. So right here, it's going to pop up right here. Boom. It's going to cast a big rock down. 
bam, it hit that summon character. That's why you're going to want summon characters because that big hit will otherwise target another character. Again, there's the summon, there's the big hit. It's going to slap that summon, instantly burst it down. Hopefully we'll get another hit here so we can see what happens when they actually don't get hit by a summon. Well, it looks like my team's too good, I guess. Um, and the summon's gonna proc up every single time that that skill comes off cooldown. But once again, we're gonna see this boss, arguably, in my opinion, is more important to get down. And the reason for that is if you don't get the shield down, you're going to lose a lot of damage on your main boss comp. For your main boss comp, I highly recommend you bring in um, your best team, to be honest. If you do poorly on your other stages and you kind of just throw in whatever you got, and you build in a really powerful main boss comp, you can actually do a lot of work anyways, even if your other comps are kind of inefficient or pretty bad. You can see here, um, I happen to have Emma plus Taylor. That's a really nice, powerful combo. Um, I also have Artis, who's a very, very powerful single turret DPS and a nice kind of tank for you. And then Serena and Liren to heal them up. I oftentimes would probably put maybe Sorietta in here if I have the option and then split Liren over to another team comp. But I oftentimes use double healer in this situation because, well, the higher I go up outside of novice and into easy, it gets much more difficult. So I want to focus on this main boss comp. You can see behind me, this is novice, by the way. I completely beat all of novice and I'm getting one advancement, a couple of gear um, consumables, as well as a recruitment card and some gear as well. Lots of gear XP, a little bit of summons for me to be able to cash in. And that is just novice. This is stuff you should be able to beat like day two, day three, 100% of the way. Easy starts to get a little bit better. And then normal even gets further on up until hard where it gets absolutely absurd to start farming this every single day. Keep in mind, if you're able to farm hell one key, you could do every single other difficulty. And that's where this comes in. You can see I already did novice. Um, and that's because... I, I know I can one key novice, so I'm just gonna go straight up do novice. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably two key easy, and then I'm gonna use the remaining keys on normal. Hopefully by the time the week ends with the Emmas that I'm gonna going to acquire, I'm going to be able to one key easy, which I should be able to do next time you guys see any update on my account. And hopefully you guys will as well because the creep banner has just popped. And by the time this video drops, I'll probably already have a summon video out on that because I really want Crete and I think he's really, really excellent. So thanks for watching everyone. Um, I am super, super excited for this uh, game mode and really to progress it because I think it's one of the most fun game modes and it's one of the most rewarding for you to get regular limited summons for the future. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys have any other tips and tricks in the comment section down below. If I missed anything, please let me know. I will be reading them. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Sub to the channel if you want to check out more Eternal Evolution content. And I will see you all.